terrific, Rosa. I wish I could cook like that. I wish you could cook like that, too. Now, Bruno, that's not fair. Greta can't be expected to cook properly. She's Australian. <laughs> that's why Bruno does all the cooking at home. Bloody crawler. <laughs> I don't do all the cooking. Greta gets the breakfast. Yeah, what do you have? Cornflakes. <laughs> Chops if you wanted them. I don't want chops. I'm sick of chops. Watch it, mate. This country was founded on chops. I've had quite enough of your devil may care anti chop attitude. <laughs> Why is it always chops? I mean, everyone eats chops all the time. Why? It's simple. We all have to eat chops. How else are we going to get rid of all the sheep? <laughs> quite right. Quite right, Rosa. Everybody's got to do their bit. I mean, if we grew thousands of sheep and nobody ate them, what would be the use of it? You're very perceptive, Rosa. Thank you, Ted. You've got a very, very clever mother there, my friend. She's got a very astute economic brain. She could become the Henry Kissinger of chops. And, <laughs> and don't you realise that chops are Australia's prime product? What about wool? Well, you can't eat wool, it gets stuck in your teeth. <laughs> you want to, I've got a pair of old footy socks out there, you can have them for dessert. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. Well, Ted, did you enjoy your dinner? Oh, it was terrific. They were the best tasting chops I've ever had. No, Ted, they weren't chops. Uh, oh, no, leg of lamb. Of course, I didn't recognise it without the mint sauce. <laughs> it wasn't lamb. Steak? Was it steak? Uh, no. Well, I give up. What was it? No, 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 Mum, don't tell him. He reckons he knows everything about food. All right, come on, let's see if the gourmet of Wombat Crescent can pick it. Don't you call me a gourmet, mate. There's none of that in the bull pit family. We've always gone out with women. <laughs> you know what I mean, just knock it off. There'll be none of that window dressing talk around my table. Dad, you're being stupid. A gourmet is an expert in food. I knew that. Like a grocer. They're a weird mob. They all wear leather aprons, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. All grocers are deviants. Come on, what does your finely tuned palate tell you you ate tonight? This dish here? Yeah, what was it? Easy, barramundi. No. Scrambled eggs? No. A donut. Dad, you're stupid. You haven't got a clue, have you? Tell him, Rosa. It was a lasagna! Oh, bless you, Rosa. <laughs> Dad, that was not a sneeze, that was dinner. I hope I am misunderstanding you, girlie. If this is some smart-ass young married joke, I'll put me Victor right through your dried flower arrangements. Ted, it is very simple. Lasagna is what we ate. It's a pasta, you know, like a spaghetti. Pasta? I hate pasta. I'm allergic to it. One bit me when I was a kid. <laughs> and every summer the bite marks reappear. You had four helpings. Well, I thought it was meat. There's meat in it, Dad. Stop shouting at me. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was next door's cat. <laughs> Could have been Neville for all I knew. Dad, you should be ashamed. Rose is good enough to move in here and look after you while Mum's in Europe, and all you can do is bitch about the food. It's all right, Greta. He doesn't really mean it. Does he? Dad, you apologise to Rosa. No. Dad? I'm, I'm not gonna. I'll write to Mum. All right, all right. Bloody daughters, give them a wog husband and they think they're Lady Grasby. <laughs> what? Nothing. Dad? Oh, all right, all right. I'm sorry, Rosa. It didn't taste like next door's cat. What's for dessert? For you, Ted, tonight, a very special dessert. Oh, what? Next door's dog. <laughs> it was a joke. Got you again. Oh, Rosa, you're so funny. You should have seen your face. Knock off the laughing. There's far too much fun going around here. Oh, did you see the look on his face? It looked like a trot upon prune. <laughs> Let's knock off the laughing. Doesn't anyone listen around here? Oh, Dad, where's your sense of humour? Well, I've got a better sense of humour than you have, girlie. That's why everybody laughs at me all the time. Yeah, yeah, sure, Ted. You're the life of the party. Yeah, I am. I'm fascinating. You? Yeah, me. I lead a very varied and interesting life in my job. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Dispatch supervisor for a putty factory. <laughs> well, what about me hobby? What hobby? Drinking? No, no, the other one. Reading Mandrake? Reading Mandrake's not a hobby, it's broadening the mind. Broadening the bum? Watch it. <laughs> all right, all right, I give up. What's your hobby? Collecting Jack Brabham autographs. <laughs> but you've only got one of them. Well, I've got hundreds. I'm going to be rich. I'll make a fortune. But they're all the same. Dear Ted, I couldn't have done it without your help. Signed, Jack Brabham. And they're all worthless. Why? You spelt Brabham wrong. <laughs> <laughs> rubbish. I spelled it the same way that he does. 
better sometimes. <laughs> and whilst I realise that my mail order autograph business is a little slow taking off. Yeah, like 15 years. I'm, I'm going to be rich eventually. Oh, yeah, like the time you were selling wooden legs door to door. That was a great idea. It would have been terrific, apart from the white ants. <laughs> None of your schemes have worked and never will work. Why don't you face it? The bull pits are doomed to poverty. I'm not. I'm going to be rich, I tell you. I hate being poor. It gives me headaches. <laughs> and if I'm useless, who paid for your mother's trip to Europe? The Woman's Day. She won it. No. <laughs> she couldn't have got there without my financial help. What financial help? I paid a departure tax. And I gave her that special coat for London. It was a plastic raincoat. <laughs> Very funny, Miss Smarty Emunese. I went to a lot of trouble to get that coat. She's the only woman in London with one of those. I bet she is. Bright yellow plastic with Department of Main Road stamp across. <laughs> oh, I forgot. We got a letter from Thelma. Oh, where is she? Um, Paris. Paris? Not the Paris that's in France. Yes. Oh, that's going to cost me. I bet she went and bought some of them Christian Dior's. <laughs> Christian Dior what? Oh, I don't know. Christian Dior anything. Motor cars, sandwiches, train sets. She never stopped talking about it before she went. Oh, read the letter, Rosa. Cooey, Australia. Hello, everyone. And stop your grumbling, Ted. Why not grumbling? <laughs> As you can see by the French stamp, I am overseas. Europe is proving quite different to Goanna Heights shopping mall. I have never seen so many migrants. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently I arrived in Rome at the same time as a cruise ship because it was chocker with Italians. <laughs> you would be right at home here, Rosa. Arrived Paris this morning and visited Eiffel Tower. Was very disappointed. It doesn't lean at all. <laughs> A note for Ted. Was very interested to see no Commodores parked in Paris streets. They must have all been stolen here as well. <laughs> must sign off now, as we're all going to visit the Louvre, because there isn't a toilet in the bus. <laughs> Lots of love, Thelma. Typical bloody Thelma, giggling away around Europe and doesn't tell me where she's hidden the Victor fuel. P.S. It's under the house, Ted. Bloody woman. <laughs>…. shambles, of course. Someone should blow nuns up. Oh, dear. What has happened now? Well, there I am, Rosa, surrounded by this vicious nun. Now, hang on, Ted. <laughs> there will be no more exploding of nuns while I am in this house. Yeah, but, but it's fun. I mean, can't a bloke have a good laugh after a hard day's work? How can I go to confession and say, forgive me, Father, for I have helped to explode a nun? <laughs> from bingo nights and then I'd have to watch Don Lane. They wouldn't do that to you, would they? Oh, no sense of humour, those Catholics. Where's me paper? In the lounge room. Oh. Oh, no. No, it's not in the lounge room. It's somewhere else. Where? Here, under the potatoes. Bloody <laughs> hell! What have you done to my paper? Oh, Mandrake's all blurry. <laughs> Maybe he's a little bit drunk. I dropped some wine on him. Never mind. Perhaps they print him again tomorrow, huh? Yeah, but what am I going to do about me paper? You didn't do this to get me to talk to you, did you? No. I mean, Thelma tried it once and it didn't work. I fell asleep. Don't you worry, Ted. I've got someone else for you to talk to tonight. Not the Pope. No. Are you sure it's not the Pope? He's a foreigner, you know. I know. He's Polish. Yeah, like the bloke that owns the milk bar down the road. And he still thinks he owns the world. I'm sure he was the bloke that took a pot shot at me during the war. Thank God I was up in a plane. <laughs> Tonight, Ted, I've invited that nice man from number 20 to dinner. Number 20? Are you mad? Well, that's that mad actor bloke from down the road. He thinks that fruit bat's pooping his poo. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very sad man. Oh, but so he should be. Serves him right for leaving the cover off his pool. I'm not having his sort in my house. But I've already invited him and I can't say no. Why not? Because he's here already. Well, don't let him in. But the doorbell's rung and I don't want to waste it. Well, tell him he can only stay for a minute because we're moving. Oh, hello and welcome. Good evening, Rosa. We're deeply touched you should invite us into your house and hopefully into your heart. Oh, come in. How kind. 
This is Ted, the Australian I was telling you about. Good day. Poor Rosa. Our hearts go out to you. Oh. <laughs> and Ted, this is the mad actor bloke I was. What is your name? I am Hayden DeWitt. De who? <laughs> DeWitt. DeWitt De who? DeWitt De who? It's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do animal impressions, you know. Yes, I can see that. Is it his feeding time? Watch it, mate. I was in the army, you know. Apart from that, I am your gracious host. Did you bring any grog? No. Typical. Did you bring any food? Ted, the mad actor bloke. Mr. DeWitt is our guest. I invited oh. him. And Sparky. Who? Sparky. He's my special friend. We travel together everywhere. Oh, and where is this Sparky? Here. Oh, that's different. <laughs> Nothing different about me. I'm quite, quite normal. I'm normal, 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 you know. Yes, of course you are, Mr. DeWitt. Um, Ted, I would like you to meet Mr. DeWitt's special friend, Sparky the Suitcase. <laughs> oh, yeah? And that's Harold the Couch. <laughs> and that's Dudley the Coffee Table. <laughs> and that's Graham the Cushion. And I'm Rosa the Wog. <laughs> I think you understand. Uh, may I sit down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, no, not that one, not that one. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's my chair. I love my chair. <laughs> and is this your couch? Yeah. Well, where can I sit then? Well, I don't know. Anywhere on the floor on Sparky. Who cares? <laughs> sit on the couch, man. That man's a fool. Now look what you've started. Now, who would like a cup of tea? Who would like a drink? Yeah, well, I... Like... Just a minute, just a minute. This is my house and I will order my drink first. Thank you. Well, Ted, what would you like? I will have, as is my right as head of the household, the only single remaining, just one left solitary beer that's in the fridge because there isn't any left. Right, Ted. And for you, Mr DeWitt? A very, very dry martini. Gordon's gin, of course. Just a smidge of bitters over cracked ice, not crushed. <laughs> stirred, not shaken, a twist, no olive. How about the other beer? That'll do. <laughs> right, two beers. Money on the fridge. Now, Ted, I would like you to meet my partner and special friend, Sparky. Oh, yeah? Now, come on, Sparky. You say hello to Ted. Hello, Ted. <gasps> Pickle me, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what's that? I'm Sparky. <laughs> what, what, what's wrong with his legs? There you go. They don't work. <laughs> That's a bit rough keeping a cripple in a suitcase. <laughs> He's a dummy. I'm not. He's the dummy. Now listen, Sparky. Ah, oh, shut up, Aiden. You're only the straight man, remember? Listen, I wouldn't put up with that. No, I'm no, not... it's all right, Ted. <laughs> He's just the dummy. He's only made of wood. See? Oh, hey, quit that. That hurts. Are you sure he's only a dummy? Yeah, he's quite sure he's solid wood. You on, you, you, you tap him. Uh, well, are you sure? Yeah, quite sure. He, he won't mind? No, you won't mind, will you, Sparky? No. Go on, tap me. Oh, well, all right, all right. Ah! Oh! 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 Little bugger trying to bite me. Sparky, behave yourself. Ah, oh, shut up. You too, Grumble Bum. <laughs> You watch it, mate, or I'll put you over my knee and drill a hole in your head. Ah, go and get nicked. <laughs> I've had just about enough of this, Sparky. You've had enough? How do you think I feel? I'm the star of the act, and look what I get for a dressing room. A bloody suitcase. <laughs> yeah, he's got a point there. There's not even room for a dunny in there, you know. <laughs> Now you just keep out of this ball pit. It's strictly between me and a, a certain lump of wood. I am a star. You're not a star. I am. I'm going on strike. You can't go on strike. Yes, I can. I'm going to join Actors' Equity. You can't join Actors' Equity. Why not? They let you in. Well, I'm an actor. You reckon, do you? <laughs> oh, right, right. That's it, that's it, that's it. If you think you're a star, just see how far you can get without me. I don't need you. Why not? I got ten. Hey? How about it, Ted? Come and work with me. We'll be rich. Yeah, but, but, but I w wouldn't know how to work you. I'll teach you. It's easy. Oh, well, all right. I I'll give it a go. All right, all right. That's it. After everything I've done for you, I'll never work with you again. 
Well, well, Alice, look, I don't want to come between you two. No, 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 no. It, I mean, isn't, it isn't your fault, Ted. It's been brewing for some time. <laughs> it's a personal thing between Sparky and me. I hope you'll both be very happy together. And although he's destroyed me, I do wish you all the best. But just watch it. Watch it, Ted. He's, he's desperately cruel. Well, I don't know. He, he, he seems to like me. <laughs> Goodbye. Here's your beers. Goodbye. What's wrong with the mad actor, Mr. DeWitt? Ah! Who's that? Oh, uh, Razor, I'd like you to meet my new friend, Sparky. Oh, hello, Sparky. Would you like a beer? wrong. I came as soon as I got the message. Oh, Craig, it's all my fault. Do you want something to eat? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, what's wrong? It's all my fault. Your father's brain, it is strange. Yeah, it's always strange. Is that the only problem? He won't let go of his dummy. Have you tried, uh, you tried swapping it for a rusk? <laughs> no, no. He's been teaching his dummy to talk. Hold on, Rosa. This could be my PhD. <laughs> How big is this dummy? Oh, about so big. How does he fit it into his mouth? <laughs> no, he's a ventriloquist dummy. His name is Sparky and he won't eat breakfast. Your Dad? No, Sparky. <laughs> but dummies don't eat. I know, but what can I do? He's part of the act. What act? Ted is going to be rich. Oh, not again. What is it this time? Sensational new ventriloquist act, where all the other acts have the man drinking a glass of water while the dummy talks. Ted is going to talk while the dummy drinks. <laughs> what happens? Gallons of water all over the floor. That's crazy. It doesn't make sense. Why is Dad making the dummy drink? Well, your father hates water. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> Look, Rosa, leave it to me. I'll sort it all out. Where is he? Oh, in the lounge room. Oh. And, Craig, yeah. please ask your father to practice with the dummy on a potty. <laughs> oh, now, Sparky, why don't you tell the boys and girls a nice story? Have you got a nice story? Yes, yes, I've got a very funny story. Is it a nice one? No, it's a filthy one. Oh, really dirty? Oh, disgusting. It's about the travelling salesman and the farmer's Dad. daughter. Oh, pickle, grandmother, give a man a heart attack. What do you want? What's all this craziness with the doll? It's not crazy. I'm going to be rich. With that? Look, it's the best ever scheme. Look, I've already got my first booking for a, for a kid's party. A hundred bucks I get. But, Dad, you're not a ventriloquist. Of course I'm a ventriloquist. I've got a doll. Listen, you want to hear a joke? Right, here we go. Hello, Sparky. How was your day? A bloody shandles, of course. Someone should blow nuns up. <laughs> Your lips are moving. My lips are not moving. They are. They look like a couple of frankfurts skipping on your chin. <laughs> They're not moving, I tell you. I've been practising. Do you want to hear a joke? Oh, yeah, all right. I've been saving this one for the Mike Walsh show. Right, here we go. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Ah, uh, hello, Sparky. Ah, uh, yes. Knock. Right, I'm ready now. Right. Knock, knock. <coughs> Who's there? Sam and Janet. Sam and Janet who? Sam and Janet evening. <laughs> 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 that's terrific, isn't he? A marvellous little doll. Dad, that's <laughs> terrible. It's the worst act I've ever seen. Well, listen, what would you know about laughing? You're just a doctor. Yeah, yeah, sure, Dad. Hey, Dad, how are you? Oh, God, he's still got it. Oh, pack it in, Ted. You're driving everybody crazy. You will never be a ventriloquist. Listen, mate, once the audience hears my act, I'm going to kill them. Not if they get to you first. <laughs> listen, Mr. Garlic Gobbler, you just watch. Oh, Dad, do we have to? Yeah, shut up and listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure Dad. Right, right. Stop saying that, will you? You ready out there? Yes. yes. Right, here I come. Ted Mysterious and his wonder dummy, Sparky. <laughs> Hello, guys and girls. Guys and girls? Yeah, it's ventriloquist talk. Right. <laughs> here we go. Right, here's the first joke. Uncle Ted. Yes, Sparky. My dog's got no nose. Really? How does he smell? Bloody terrible! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a ripper, boys and girls? That's terrible. <laughs> Get off. Your lips are moving. They're not moving. Here comes the next joke. My wife went to the West Indies. Really? Jamaica? No, she went of her own accord. <laughs> <laughs> what a ripper! <laughs> OK, Dad, that's terrific. Let's go. No, freeze. 
Nobody leaves till after the big finish. This is the finish? What happened to the big start? <sighs> right, Sparky. Why don't you jump into a big song? Right, Sparky. Why don't you jump into a sawmill? <laughs> Next, boys and girls, I'm oh, going to do... I've, I've come to take Sparky back. Oh, you... thank God. But, hey. you... but you can't. He's mine. You gave him to me. You don't understand. My life, my career, it's in tatters without Sparky. I haven't slept for a week. Oh, Sparky, please come back to me. What do you say? Piss off! <laughs> A heart attack. Oh. <laughs> Shut up, Sparky. <laughs> what are you staring at? <laughs> Say that again. What are you staring at? <laughs> Tell me, grandmother, it's alive. Talk to me, Rosa. I swear to God it talked to me. I could see its lips moving. Yes, Ted. Oh, I'm glad that mad actor bloke took him back. Of course, it wasn't Sparky's fault. I mean, it'd be just the way he was brought up, that was all. Yes, Ted. <sighs> Anyone would go crazy hanging around a bloke like that. Yes, Ted. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to see the back of him. Yes, Ted. I must say, Rosa, you make Milo different to what Thelma does. Yes, Ted, you like it. Mm. It's terrific. It's the best Milo I've had in years. It's so different. Why is that? It's Bonox. <laughs> <laughs>